In the last couple of videos, we built our uh, 555 A-stable timer, which is putting out this oscillating clock pulse. And we built a uh, monostable uh, 555 timer circuit, which gives us a debounced uh, push button switch. So we can push this and we get a nice clean debounced uh, logic output here. And then we built our uh, uh, bi-stable uh, circuit here, which also gives us a nice uh, you know, debounced stable output for our toggle switch. Now what we need to do is just combine these three signals here into a single clock output signal for our clock circuit. And what we want is we want to you know, either output our oscillating uh, signal or our manual signal, depending on whether we've, which one we've selected over here. So I came up with a pretty simple circuit here that I think will do the trick. Uh, we've got our A-stable pulse input, which is this guy. We've got our select, which is the, the push button select. And then our manual pulse, of course, is the the manual button that we can push there to get a manual pulse. And so what you see here is if our select is on like this, then we have a one coming into this AND gate. And so our, uh, our oscillator here, our A-stable oscillator, uh, if it's a one or a zero, then that's just gonna come out on this output here because a one and a one is a one and a zero and a one is a zero. So that's just gonna pass through. And then it's gonna come down to this OR gate and, uh, well, first, if we look at this other AND gate, our select here is inverted, and so we have a zero coming into this AND gate, and so no matter what this is, this AND gate's always going to output a zero. So then over at this OR gate, we've got our clock uh, pulse over here on this one input, and then we've got a, a zero on this other output, so again, that clock pulse just, just flows right through. So if our select is on, then, you know, our output over here is going to be our, our clock pulse. If we turn the select off, then, of course, we have a zero coming in here, and our clock pulse isn't going to come out. This AND gate's always just going to output a zero. Uh, on the other hand, our, uh, our select, when we invert it here, we have a one here. And so if our manual pulse is a one, then we've got a one out on the other side. If our manual pulse is a zero, then we get a zero out on the other side. And the same thing with the OR gate. If we have a, a zero or a one coming in here, we get a zero or a one coming out here. This, of course, is always a zero. And so if we push our manual pulse, then we should see the manual pulse come out there when our select is off. So this uh, looks like it should do everything we, we want. There's one other feature that I'm going to add to this, which is uh, this, this halt line. And what this is, is you know, once we build the rest of the, the computer, um, we want to have a way for a program to be able to uh, halt the computer uh, programmatically. So maybe you have a program that computes something and it gets to the end of the program, it outputs its result, and then it doesn't have any more work to do, and so it doesn't have any more work to do, and so it wants to halt the, the execution of the computer. There's nothing else to do. So what we'll have is we'll have a signal coming from the control module in the computer coming into the clock. Uh, so it'll just be another input into this, into this clock circuit that says halt. And what that does is it should just turn off the clock. And so if there's no clock, then the computer's not going to do anything. And so what happens is we have this halt signal come in. It's normally going to be low, and so we invert it and get a 1. And then that 1 is just anded with our, our clock before, whether it's manual or, or the automatic clock. It's anded with that, and it comes out here. But when the halt goes high, if the computer, if the program wants to halt execution, uh, this goes high, then this goes low, and then you can see the final output over here of our, of our AND gate is always going to be a 0. And so there will be no clock, no matter whether you've got it in you know, manual mode or using the oscillator, pushing the button, it doesn't matter. You're, you're gonna get nothing out there until, you, until we reset the computer, or, um, restart the program or something. So if we wanna build this up, it looks like we've got a couple inverters, um, three AND gates, and an OR gate. So what we could do is we could use the, uh, the 74LS04. This has six inverters on it. Of course, we're only gonna use two of them. We've got the 74LS08, and this has four AND gates on it. We're going to use three of those. And then the 74LS32, and this has four OR gates on it. Of course, we're only going to use one of them. A little bit inefficient to use these three chips. You know, we're not using all, all six of these. We're not using all four of these. We're not using all four of these, but uh, it should work. And one thing we could do is we could uh, re redraw this using different gates. Um, you know, for example, you could use all NAND gates or all NOR gates. Um, any any logic circuit can be represented entirely in NAND gates, or it could be represented entirely in NOR gates. Those are called universal gates. And so just an example, I, I drew up uh, you know, an equivalent circuit here using just NAND gates. 
And so these are the same inputs. We've got our A stable pulse, our select, our manual pulse, and then our halt line coming in. And I'm using just NAND gates. And so for example, this, this NAND gate, I just tied the inputs together and it, it turns it into essentially an inverter. And so the, uh, the nice thing about this is that you know, by using all NAND gates, it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gates uh, total, seven NAND gates. And so the 74LS00 um, chip has four NAND gates on it. So we could use just two of these. And so normally, this would be this would be a pretty good uh, pretty good win here, right? We're using fewer parts, um, so it's going to take up less space. It's going to take less power. And it's going to be smaller uh, and everything else. But you know, we're not building. Uh, we're we're definitely not trying to optimize for uh, the the smallest computer possible here. Um, and I think this circuit is is easier to understand. It's going to be easier to troubleshoot. Uh, we're not trying to save space. We're not trying to save power. Um, you know, the cost of an extra chip is. You know, less than a you know, it's good. It's a you know, fifty cents or something. I don't know whatever these chips cost, and uh, so it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use these just because I think this circuit's easier to easier to understand. But if you want to, you know, experiment with something else, you can. And, and actually, if you want to try to come up with a better uh, circuit here, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this, and I I got it down to seven gates. Um, but maybe you can do better. Uh, so maybe something to think about. Okay, so I wired it all up here. So we've got our 74LS04, our 74LS08, and our 74LS32 uh, all hooked up here. And you can see I hooked up the power pin to uh, pin 14 and the ground to uh, pin 8 or pin 7 uh, for all of these. And that's how, the, that's how they all are. If we look at the data sheet for the 74LS04, for example, you can see power pin's 14, ground is pin 7. And uh, it's got the six inverters on there. We're only using two of them. Um, and then the same thing for our, your, our uh, AND gate. This is the 74LS08. And uh, you can see it's got power and ground. And then it's got the three AND gates, or excuse me, the four AND gates. We're only using three of them on there. So if we kind of follow this through just to, to make sure it all looks right, our, the output of our select here, so when we push our select button, that output, of course, is on pin three. That's connecting to our input of our inverter, and then it's also jumpered over here to the input of one of our AND gates. So that looks right. Select is going to our inverter and one of our AND gates. The other input of that AND gate should be our A-stable pulse. And so indeed, that was this AND gate here. The other input is this, and it's going all the way over to the output here of our A-stable pulse on pin three of this triple five timer. So that's our first AND gate, that looks good, and our first inverter. The other output of that inverter goes to another AND gate. So the output of that inverter is here, and that goes to an input of uh, our second AND gate. And uh, the other input of that AND gate is this guy here, so that comes from uh, the output of our, of our manual pulse. So indeed, uh, the manual pulse goes in that second AND gate. And then the outputs of both of these AND gates should go into our OR gate. So the outputs are here and here. Uh, so here is going into pin one of our OR gate, and then our other output is, is here, and that's going into pin two of our OR gate. Perfect. And then the output of our OR gate comes around to the input of the third AND gate, which is up here, uh, which is what we'd expect. And then the other input of that AND gate comes from this inverter that comes from our halt signal. So if we follow that around, uh, the other input is coming from an inverter, and I'm just using uh, one of the other inverters on the 7404 up here. And then the input of that inverter is coming from our, uh, our halt pin, which I've just uh, jumpered here to, to ground, since we don't want to halt. Uh, and then the output of, of that AND gate is our, is our clock signal. And so I have this nice uh, blue LED showing us what our, what our final clock signal looks like. So let's take a look at this. Let's uh, plug our power in. And uh, nothing happens, but that's because we should be looking at our manual. So if we pulse our manual, we see the manual output. If we turn our select on, we're now getting our clock output going through there, and we can turn that off, go manual. If we have that, our manual didn't do anything. Uh, and then if we um, unground our, our halt and put that to five volts, it halts it. It doesn't matter what we do here the clock output's halted. So if the computer program that's running wants to halt the computer, it can do that by, by bringing this halt line high. So we'll just leave that low for now. We can see it uh, looks like it does everything we want it to do. 
And so the last thing I'm going to do on this um, before we, we call the clock module done is uh, I, you know, I don't think we need these LEDs anymore. I think the clock module is pretty simple by itself and, and just seeing the final clock output uh, makes sense. But you, know, you might want to leave these other LEDs here if you want, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them out. And then of course we can take out the, the resistors here as well. And I guess I could take the power off while I'm doing this. Uh, so I'll just pull these LEDs and resistors, the current limiting resistors for these LEDs out. And that leaves us with this. And so this, uh, this is going to be our, our finished clock module. So we plug the power back in so we can see we can run it. We can stop it. We can pulse it. And if the computer halts it, then it doesn't matter what we do. It's halted. And so that's the clock module.